welcome to edupedia world i am see radhika singhal so in the last class we were discussing regarding security analysis we understood the meaning of security and in order to invest in a security we have to just balance the risk and return after analyzing the risk and return an investor invest in a security so an investor used to compute the return and the return can be computed by finding the difference between its resale value and its purchase value that's how you compute the return and in case you receive any revenue return which is dividends during the year so that also adds in your kitty but the question is that how to value the security how to know that what is the value at which you can invest what could be the value at the end of year 1 because you have to invest at year 0 how could you assess that the return from the security will be as per your expectation because you do not know the value at the end of year 1 so to analyze security there are three approaches to know the value or to compute the value of a security three approaches are the fundamental approach the technical approach and third one is efficient capital market theory all these three approaches you can say are the three different school of thoughts let's understand one by one the fundamental approach says that every stock has an intrinsic value it has its own value basis which you invest in it and that intrinsic value is the level at which the demand and supply of that stock of security is will be at equilibrium that means at that price of security the demand is equal to the supply of that security so that there is no fluctuation of stock price at that level now the question is that how to know the intrinsic value how to compute it do you all guys remember the gordon value the gordon model to compute the expectation of equity shareholder we will assume that the equity shareholder expects all the earnings of an organization so the fundamental approach has the same mathematical formula to compute the return of that security because the intrinsic value depends on the whole growth or the capitalized value so whatever change in the market price of securities there while computing ke we assume that the expectation of the shareholder is on the whole growth it's the company is not retaining anything and if it's retaining whatever is retaining it is growing at that level only so in order to compute the intrinsic value the intrinsic value is d1 upon p0 plus so that's the same formula the way we compute ke this model states that the price of a share should be equal to the next year expected dividend because as of now when you are investing what you will expect that how much dividend you will receive at the end of year 1 so to compute the value at p0 you have to know that what will be the return at p1 divided by the difference between the appropriate discount rate so discount rate is the difference between the growth rate of the organization and how much expectation of the equity shareholder g is determining the long term growth rate of the organization and r is denoting the appropriate discount rate because you are discounting the security basis your expectation so r is same as k what we learned in cost of capital and this is how we compute the intrinsic value of a share or a security so to estimate the intrinsic value of a stock that can be done by estimating the future potential earnings of an organization with how much it can grow and various other factors like relating to specific industry its competitiveness and the, you can say the quality of the management who is running it how what is the operational efficiency of the organization capital structure of the organization all these factors will affect the value of a stock its intrinsic value so why we are doing it we are doing it to compare the current market price of a particular security with its intrinsic or you can say this is a theoretical value right so the decision between buying and selling an individual security depends upon the comparison between the two the current market price and the intrinsic value so if the intrinsic value is more than the market value 
so based on this approach it recommends that it should buy the security and vice versa if the intrinsic value is less than the market value of security then they suggest not to buy rather sell that security right let's do an example to compute an intrinsic value of a share and see if the investor could invest in that security or not an investor is holding 1000 shares of right choice limited. the current rate of dividend paid by the company is long rupees 5 per share the long term growth profit is expected to be 10% and the expected rate of return is 19.62% we need to find out the current market price of the share so based on this information we have to compute that theoretically what should be the value of a share if these are the expectation so we all know that p0 is equals to d into 1 plus g divided by r minus g the same when you computed ke so just instead of ke make it r so both are your see the notes the same thing that is denoting the expectation of the shareholder and r is also the required rate of return of shareholders so p0 will be 5 into 1 plus 10% which is the growth rate less 19.62% divided by 0.10% which is equal to 57.17 so in this case the interesting value will be 57.17 now in order to invest the investor will compare if the market price is more than 57.17 or less than 57.17 and after comparing both of these values the investor will invest into the security right in order to do a fundamental analysis we do the analysis at all the three stages from macro to the micro stage so macro means analyzing the economy because how the economy is performing is directly related to how the that industry or the company is performing and they have like two in one relationship so if you can say that uh, an economy a bullish period is going on bullish means that there is a fall in share price that means there's a slackening in growth and all so do a fundamental analysis first the economy is being studied the next is industry so industry is a combination of a group of units whose end products and services are similar let's say automobile industry so automobile industry implies all the automobile products in it i'm not talking about a specific company so to compute or to comment on the value or real value of a share how that automobile industry is performing is analyzed and below this is the micro level analysis that how the company is performing so you can say that fundamental analysis is a three level systematic process which analyze both external and the internal environment of a company before evaluating the value of its shares okay right so the next analysis is the technical analysis in technical analysis it is on a belief that past repeats itself so in technical analysis the market price of securities are computed or determined by the demand and supply equilibrium so what an analyst do an analyst in order to predict that what will be the behavior of the stock price in future he studies these formations that how the demand and supply is going on to study these formations there are various tools one of the tool is technical chart what happened in technical chart the shares trend is formed that is it involves plotting of the shares and its quantity that how much shares are being traded in the industry on the basis of analysis of those charts the future price movements of the share is being predicted so technical charts they all are an assumption that share prices are depend on the past movements now technical chart could be line chart it could be a bar chart and it could be a point and figure chart the next approach is efficient market hypothesis so in this it is based on a assumption that market force actually affects the price of a share so what market force is this that is what the information is available in the market so a market is treated as efficient when all the known information is immediately known to all the investors and if that information is known to the information 
then that will directly affect the price of the share. So efficient market hypothesis could be divided into or you can say it can be categorized into three forms. One is very strong form of efficiency. Next is semi strong of efficiency and the last one is weak form of efficiency. Strong form of efficiency as the name suggests that all the information is available on public domain. So whatever decisions that the board of director is taking that is ultimately effect in the price of the stock. So it assumes that there is no such insider trading and all which could affect the price of the share. The information is directly affecting the stock price and the present stock price is the impact of all the decisions of the board of directors. So in strong form of efficiency it is assumed that insider trading is not available. So this type of market is a myth. Next is semi strong form of efficiency. So in semi strong form of market, it is used that the strong prices reflect all the public information. So you can say the public information means the information which is known to the public. So only that information impacts the value of the share. That is no insider information is impacting. So you can say that the historical information in public domain is actually affecting the value of a share. And the last one is weak form of efficiency which means that the past information does not affect the value of the share. So this type of market assumes that the stock prices undergoes a change only on the implementation of a decision and sudden change. So let's say that there is a court judgment or uh, you can say the government changed certain policy. So the historical movements whatever happened in the company that are completely irrelevant. This decision will impact the value of the share. So the market forces is weak in the weak form of efficiency market. So you can see that all the school of thoughts, the fundamental is on the intrinsic value. The technical market assumes that all the past information actually affecting the share's value and it's only on the basis of the analysis of the past trend that the value of a share is being evaluated. And in efficient market hypothesis, the market forces affect or impact the value of the share. There are other theories also which actually predicts the market forces that how the share value is being impacted and what should be the future price price. One of them is Dow Jones theory. Dow Jones theory is one of the most earliest and one of the most popular theory. It was given by Charles H. Dow. According to this theory, the share price movement it can be of three types. One is primary, next is secondary movements, and the third is minor fluctuations or you can say daily fluctuation. Primary type or primary movements, they reflect the long range behavior or trend of a shares. So long range means it extends from one to three years, which either will reflect the upward movement of a share. Upward movement means that is a bullish as of now or a downward trend. You can say that is bearish movement. So these movements indicate the basic trend in the market. The next is secondary movement. Secondary movement is exactly reversal of your primary movements. If the primary movement is bullish, the secondary movement will be bearish. And if the primary type will be bearish, the secondary movement will be bullish. So this exists for a shorter span of time. Like you can say probably say three months. And the next is minor fluctuations and daily fluctuation. So these indicate the irregular fluctuations which occur on a daily basis and it does not have time span that is only for a daily movement and this cause certain speculation in the market. The last theory is random walk theory. Random walk theory was given by M.G. Kendall. He says that the market price of a share could not be predicted. It is very random and it's quite unpredictable. He compared the movement of share prices with that of a movement of a drunken man. Because of a drunken man, you cannot predict that what will be his next step. So he says that a share will be like a drunken man. So you cannot predict that what will be the future price of a stock market. That's all for today. Thank you so much and keep smiling.